What's up, guys? Uh, I want to try something different today. So for those that are listening to the podcast, I'm in my car, just started the engine, and for those that are watching the video on YouTube, then you're gonna join me on a little joy ride. We're gonna go on a journey together. I just posted something on my Facebook page. I said, <laughs> just turning the AC on here, I said if you have 20 minutes in a car with me, um, what question, what thing would you wanna know or what would you ask? So 20 minutes in a car, we're gonna try a little car confessions. And I wanna share some things, maybe that I've never shared before on this, because um, I wanted to continue to add value in any way possible. So here's one from Carla. Molina, she said, I want to know your three truths plus what your self-care rituals are. Um, I'll start with that. She asked a few other questions, but I'll start with that. Uh, the first one, the first thing that's coming up for me right now is that always come from love and win-win in every situation, whether it be relationships, business, um, you know, if someone hurts you or you feel like someone did something that wasn't fair to you, always come from love and win-win. It's much easier said than done. And trust me for, you know, it's still challenging for me to do, especially when I feel defensive or upset, it's hard to do that. But always come from love and win-win. The second thing I would say is relationships are so important. You know, we are born here to connect with others. So find, people that bring you joy, happiness, and support you, and do the same for those people as well. Find the right relationships because that's what we're here to do is to connect. And the third thing I would say is, the third truth is that your dreams are the most powerful thing. Without a dream, there's again, no point being here. And we are lost without dreams. So find the time on a daily basis to dream and pursue your dream, whatever that looks like, be on the pursuit of your dream. Uh, and then self-care rituals. I would say, I really like to do things to get me in the flow. I feel like that's my self-care, is like playing basketball, uh, doing a run, doing something active where I'm focusing on, you know, working on my body and my mental health and my physical health. For me, that's a lot of fun. So doing activities that are fun, going in the ocean, swimming, body surfing, disconnecting from the phone and connecting to my body and the world. I also, I also love, self-care for me is like not thinking about business or my vision. It's just like chilling. So that could be watching a movie, that could be having dinner with friends, that could be it's relaxing and, and chilling out. So doing things that allow me to relax and chill out. So from Mark, who has influenced me the most in terms of leadership and why? Um, you know, I really like, Michael Hyatt has been a guy, for me, I just feel like he's a great leader for his team, for the content that he writes, um, and for how he shows up in the world. I just feel like he's always got things figured out. And I'm sure he's got his own challenges and his own adversities and he's got a number, he's got his own family he's got a number of children and they have their challenges but whenever I'm around him wherever I watch a video of him he's just so cool calm and collected and his team loves him his his content is great his branding is great the value he offers to the world is great and I just feel like he's got years of experience being a CEO and he knows how to lead a company to success and now he's replicated that for himself and he's done an incredible job in my mind. So I feel like Michael Hyatt is great. I also really love uh, Tony Robbins. I think he's done an incredible job as a leader in terms of the way he impacts people on his team, that I've met a number of people on his team who have had a profound impact on his, on his life and his ability to connect and his message and things like that, but also the community he's evolved and developed through his message and how he continues to be in service to people. I think of a leader as someone who is in service to themselves, their team, and to their community. And those that are able to lead at a high level on all three areas is a really challenging thing to do. It's not easy. You've got to have such you got to be so grounded on who you are and your strengths and your weaknesses and you've got to be really willing to let go of your ego in a lot of situations and think about how you can be in service to support other people. So it's something I, you know, constantly get to work on and I'm challenged with every now and then 
So how can I be in service to all those people? Myself, because if we're not able to lead ourselves to fulfillment and happiness, then it's gonna be hard to lead a team around us and then hard to impact other people in our community. So for me, that's something I looked up to and continue to evolve myself. So Nicola asks, what advice would you give to a teenager around would you wish someone had given you would you wish someone had given me as a as a teenager around 15 16 years old you know i think i was just really worried about the future as a kid i was really worried about like you know am i what am i going to be doing in the future i was really uncertain i didn't know what life was going to entail i didn't know what was going to happen and i wanted to know how things were going to happen so what i would say to, um, I wish someone had said to me when I was a teenager is to focus on the season of your life. Have a vision, have a dream, and just pursue your dreams with curiosity because so much can change and evolve that's out of our control on a daily basis or on a yearly basis. And as a teenager, I didn't even know who I was. So I would say um, be okay with the uncertainty of the future. Um, and that it's okay to not know exactly what you're going to do, but have dreams that you can pursue with curiosity until you're more clear on that. And also, you don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to have everything figured out right this moment. You're going to go through experiences, adversity, and lessons that are going to guide you, and um, you're going to learn through the messiness of life and through the ups and downs of life. And also, I wish someone had told me to, to master more skills, like become a master of your curiosity. So I was mastering my sports, but I wasn't mastering necessarily relationship skills early on. And I wish I would have learned more about communication, more about speaking in front of others, more about articulating my idea, packaging it and delivering it to peers, friends, teammates, whatever it may be. Learning communication, I think, that is one of the most important skills in any business, getting any job, is to be able to deliver our message or or our ideas in such a way that it moves other people to action. Whether that action is to hire you, to take your advice and use it, to enroll people in your vision, whatever it may be, learning to communicate. And it took me until I was about 25 when I started to take public speaking class because I saw the value and the importance of communicating your ideas and your message. And if you want to generate any type of results and get people behind anything you're up to, you need to learn how to communicate what that is to them and get them to take action on it. Otherwise, you're, it's going to be hard to get your ideas out there or get people to buy into who you are and how you can support their company if you're looking for a job. So that's uh, what I wish someone would have told me when I was 15, 16 years old. Sev asked two favorite book, books and two favorite things that have gotten me in the last couple of years that have gotten me to this place in my life. Uh, one of the books is The Alchemist, hands down, one of my favorite books of all time. I don't read a lot of books cover to cover, but that one I couldn't put down. So The Alchemist is a, is a must. I also think the, um, the Four Agreements, I mean, such a powerful, basic, concept of these four agreements that we should be living by on a moment-to-moment -moment basis and when we don't live by these agreements challenges occur more and more so and we deal with more pain and suffering so those would be the two most important books uh ideas was that the other thing two two things or ideas that you've learned in the last that I've, two years two I've things or ideas that i've learned in the last two years one is to be more patient. Patience is something that I have struggled with. I'm the youngest of four. I'm the baby in the family. I like things my way. I like things yesterday, not in next week. So being patient with anything, whether it be you know, sitting in this traffic, we've stopped a bunch of times, um, trying to get anything I want in life, being patient with knowing that things take time sometimes. And um, you can only control, like Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. said, to the tips of your fingers, right? Tiffany likes that line. You can only control to the tips of my fingers is how much I can control. 
I can't necessarily control the traffic or other people not doing things if I want them to do things or whatever it may be. So uh, those would be the two things that I would talk about there. So Taryn asks, uh, if you were to die tomorrow, would you have any regret, any regrets? And I think the only regret I would have is, hmm, I think I'd feel like, was I fully, was I fully honest to everyone in my life at all times? You know, I used to steal and, and cheat in school and do all these things and you know I wouldn't tell my parents the full truth all the time so I think I would just be like you know is there anything that I have done or said that I would take back or that I wasn't in full integrity or did I lie about something or did I hold back out of fear of hurting them or getting in trouble by my parents or peers or whatever it was or teachers you know is there anything that I live fully 100% in truth. And I don't know if anyone really lives 100% in truth and says everything they feel and says everything that's happened in their life and in, in, in every situation. But I think I would just be like, did I do it? And could I have lived a more truthful life? Um, in, in terms of other regrets, I would think I would ask myself, you know, did I give fully of my energy and my ideas and my gifts to the world? And at this moment, I feel like for what I have and what I've been able to develop for the skills that I was born with and what I've developed, I feel like I'm giving my all. And I feel like I'm giving my all so that I can also be balanced enough to recharge and give more the next day. So I, I would feel really good about, you know, I don't want to die right now, but I would feel like, you know what, with, with what I've had and what I've been able to do, I feel like I've done my best in this moment. Am I happy or am I content? I would say uh, I choose to be happy and happiness is a choice a lot of times. Yes, there's other factors, there's our environment, there's results we're creating, there's things we're going through in our lives that are gonna be ups and downs. But I think it's a choice for me. I'm happy because I'm grateful. I think it's a lot about perspective. I'm very grateful, you know, I get to travel to third world countries and build schools for kids and be a part of this process with Pencil to Promise. And so I witness a lot of people that have so much less than me. I mean, we're driving around here in Los Angeles right now. Um, you know, I have a car. You know, most people don't have the things that I have, or they don't have the experience that I have, they don't have the relationships that I have, they don't have the education that I have. And for me, I choose to be happy because I'm so blessed and grateful for all that I've created, all that I have, all that's been given to me. I'm grateful to be alive. Like there's so many things that could have happened where I could not be alive today. And I'm just grateful that I get to experience life. So it's a, it's a way of thinking and a way of perspective that for me, there are moments where I'm not happy, where I'm frustrated or I'm angry or resentful or whatever. And then I realize like, why am I holding on to this? Why is this, why am I allowing this to happen? I choose how I wanna feel in every moment. I choose again, like the four agreements, uh, to either take things personally or not. And if I take things personally, then I'm gonna be unhappy, ungrateful, frustrated, and, um, and I choose to let those things go quickly. Doesn't mean I'm perfect, but I choose to more than not be happy. Here's a question that someone asked me earlier today, I was speaking at an event. You know, you're doing a lot of webinars, are webinars working for you? Um, it seems like things are shifting a lot in the business world. Like what is working in business as an entrepreneur and what is not working? And things are always shifting. And so something I'm always thinking about, so someone said, what are you thinking about when you know that all these things are shifting for people? And, I, and I, I'm constantly thinking about how do I build what I have currently? How do I maximize what I've created currently? My podcast, my courses, webinars, all these things that I'm doing. But I'm always constantly thinking about where is the puck going? Where is the puck going to be, right? And where can I, predict what's going to generate results in the future, what's gonna get the maximum results for my vision of impacting more people, 100 million people I wanna impact, so what's gonna give me the maximum results 
that's going to give me the, the least resistance, you know, because more and more people are doing podcasts, more and more people are doing webinars, more and more people are trying to do these courses. And a lot of people are saying the market is being saturated now because of this. So how do you stay ahead? How do you be first or the best or the most different in these different industries and things like that? And so I'm constantly thinking about what's going to be big in the next year, two years, three years, and how can I get ahead of 99% of people to, to get to that place so that I'm first or I've learned enough in the process to be able to be there. And I'm constantly investing money and time into researching what that's going to be. And that research might be just going to events where smart people are at who are doing different things and asking them the questions that research might and investment might be trying things. You know, I tried to launch a digital magazine because I felt like online publishing magazines was going to be bigger than print magazines. And while print magazines are dying and some people are doing digital magazines well, I spent, you know, a hundred grand trying to launch a magazine that, that I never launched. But for me, it was like, at least I'm testing and I'm trying things and I'm setting myself up to win um, for the things that are potentially going to be big. But the podcast I launched before people started launching podcasts because I saw this is where it was going. Smartphones were making it easier and easier for people to consume audio, whereas before it was a challenge. And I never listened to podcasts before. But now with the smartphones, everyone has a podcast. Now I think there's 500,000 podcasts now. So I am constantly thinking, what is, how can I maximize what we have today for my business, health, everything, but also what is next? Because there's always things are, that are disrupting industries. Every industry has disruption. You think about Uber, you know, people, the next generation is not going to be driving cars. They may not even get their driver's license because they don't want to drive. There are different technologies, different apps, different things that are happening in the world right now that is disrupting industries. So what you think is going to be working in the long term may not work. So you've got to constantly be innovating, reinventing, reinvesting in new ideas, new technology, new platforms, new ways of creating an income, and spe specifically in business. For me, it's what are the things that I'm going to do to continue to attract potential customers because the only way to build a business is through sales and generating revenue. So what am I going to do to continually connect and add value to an audience, stay relevant, and then offer something that's going to solve a challenge or a problem for that audience? Um, and you know what the course is right now is it's kind of like the bread and butter for what I have going on. It's how I generate a lot of sales, but it may not be that in a few years. It may not be as successful with all the saturation. So how can I get ahead of everyone else in business right now in the industry that I'm in? That's constantly on my mind. And now we're driving through Beverly Hills, um, one of the beautiful streets. Everything in Beverly Hills is so much nicer and curated and crafted specifically to their liking. So um, that's something I'm thinking about is staying ahead of, you know, while everyone's asking me, how do I launch a podcast? I'm thinking, how do I get something different than a podcast next while maximizing what I have? And I think you shouldn't try to jump into what everyone else is doing. You should be thinking ahead of what everyone else is doing. Otherwise, you'll always be left behind and struggling to get caught up to people. So start skipping a couple steps of where is it going, not where is it at right now. If you're trying to get into something right now, you might be too late. That's what I'm thinking about. What's your word of intention for this week? My word of intention this week. Did I say it on our team call or no? No, we didn't have that. Okay. My word of intention this week is patience. There is a lot of different things happening. My schedule changes every day. Different things are happening and I'm trying to fit it all in. And sometimes I can feel overwhelmed or stressed in any, in any manner. And I'm always trying to create something meaningful and powerful. We've got this big event, Summit of Greatness coming up. There's a lot of moving parts. Our team has never done a big event like this, so we're all learning on the process and as we go. And so I am uh, having patience during the process. That's what I'm focused on. 
So this is a, an experiment, guys. I wanted to try this out. Thank you guys for listening. And I'm in my 1991 Cadillac Eldorado Burritos that I bought for $4,000. Uh, and I rarely drive this thing. I usually take Uber around. And we've got 57,552 miles on this bad boy. So maybe in the next one, I'll update you on how many miles I've driven on this thing. And the goal is to answer your questions. Subscribe to the YouTube channel because we've got great guests coming up. Uh, every single week and leave a comment let me know what you guys thought of this session if you enjoy this format if you like following me around in my neighborhood in Los Angeles and share this with your friends I appreciate you guys very much I love you car confessions we're out <laughs>